the company that you work for? Yes. So I work for Granite Equity Partners. Mm -hmm. So we are a private investment firm based in St. Cloud um, with some remote offices in Minnesota. Um, so our firm itself helps grow and govern businesses throughout greater Minnesota. So we invest in them and then help those businesses grow, stay local. Uh, and we, we have an emphasis on community prosperity and well-being. So it, it is um, twofold, right? Creating value and helping these companies grow, but also people matter most um, and investing in that. So my role specifically is helping when we have senior leadership needs in our nine portfolio companies that we own, helping recruit for those leadership positions. Um, as we look at making new investments, um, it's looking at the teams um, and the people and you know, looking at succession planning, transitions, um, and then a, a small piece of my job will be helping develop an internship program. Okay. So I get to work with all levels, millennials to boomers. How exciting. Yeah, <laughs> yes, and each generation is different, different. Mm -hmm. um, and getting to know them and understanding what makes, generally speaking, each generation tick, and um, you know, to what I've said earlier, and helping them find their passion and aligning that with needs we have at our organizations and making sure those are good fits. Okay. So now that really does take me to this point that you, that you have an incredible insight into what happens behind the scenes. As you recruit people and you talk to people about these desires, mm -hmm. I think you, you have, you've, you've told me that you have an insight into um, how people view wanting a job and going after a job and mm -hmm. mixing that with a passion mm -hmm. or purpose. Would you tell us a little bit about that? I'm being inten intentionally vague. Yeah. So, um, when I meet someone for the first time, I mean, I'm wired naturally to be really curious about who are they, where did they grow up, what is their background, not just what is on your resume. Um, and I don't think many people uh, ask those kinds of questions. It's more about, what, you know, reading through a resume. And I. I think I ask much broader questions to really get to know someone. Um, people give me energy and I want to get to know them really deeply. If you ask any of my friends, I'm always the one asking millions of questions because I want to know. Um, so, you know, as I kind of go out and approach, you know, recruiting, whether it's for a specific position or more networking and building that network, um, I think asking a lot of questions is important. Um, being curious is important. Um, you know, people choose their career at a very young age. Um, whether they you know graduate from high school and go to a trade school, or they go to a four-year university, yeah. they're picking a degree that will somewhat dictate their career to start and. I mean, when I was 18, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. <laughs> Clearly, I was an accounting major, and now I'm not even doing that. Right. But um, I think there can be this, um, this fear that you picked something and you should stick with it. No matter what. No matter what. And that's not how it should be. Um, so when I meet with someone, it's getting curious about, okay, besides what's on paper, like what gets you out of bed? What gives you energy? Like you can be good at something, but you might not enjoy it. I could do the accounting, but I didn't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that question causes people pause. Like, what do you mean good at and enjoy? Because you don't get those questions asked. Right, often. right, yeah. You don't get asked. Right. And, and sometimes I, you know, I can tell people haven't really thought about it. And so I, I encourage them, take some time to think about it. Um, you know, I can sense pretty quickly if they, they know who they are. Um, and I can sense if maybe they don't. So um, forcing or, or putting it out there for someone to 
to be able to articulate, here's what I'm good at, here's what gives me passion, here's what comes naturally to me, that is really key. So you can actually change the trajectory of their life. Yeah, yeah. Really, which can be very powerful uh, yeah, for most people. Yeah, I've never it's, thought of that. It's not comfortable to say, it's all right. Content. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not comfortable to say, oh my goodness, I, I remember the feeling after I put in 15 years of, of work and it, thinking I'm going to go and be a life coach. And I remember hearing my mom say, you're going to be wow. <laughs> right? And I will never yep. use my master's degree. So I, I, I really understand how difficult that was, mm -hmm. but how empowering it was mm -hmm. ever since. Yeah. And, and for you too, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I think what, what I'm hearing you say is encouraging people to really take a look at that, ask themselves those questions, even if it's painful, because it can pay off in the long run. Absolutely. I am... Um one of the exercises that I did when I was going through this was a love it and loathe it exercise. Oh, okay. So I would, you have to pay attention. And in the hustle and bustle of meetings and work, being mindful is really hard. It is. And I mean, that was five years ago and you know, just with technology and phones and distractions, it's even harder. So to be mindful of when you feel on top of the world and why, and write it down. When you leave the building and feel terrible, why, write it down. So going through that exercise over the course of a week or two will help you start to identify trends. Um, and maybe it's, maybe it's the people you're working with, maybe it's the culture, maybe it is truly what you're doing day to day. Mm -hmm. uh, but being able to like be mindful and pay attention to that I think is important. Okay, so if people look up Love It or Loathe It, will they be able to find it? Yes, it's literally just like a T account. Okay. <laughs> like love It or Loathe It? Lo loathe It, yep. Loathe it. Yep. Thank you. Yes. My, my pronunciation is not, is not <laughs> no. quite right. It's okay. <laughs> my audience knows yes, that. Yes, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> so what I will do is yep. we will find a way to link that. I yep. think many people will actually find it very useful. Yes, useful. absolutely. You mentioned that a lot of people that you interview don't know their strengths. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's one thing to talk about passions, but they don't even know their strengths. Mm -hmm. Why do you think that is? Um, like I mentioned, you know, earlier, the strength finders helped me put words to it. So I might have been able to, to say what I'm good at um, in, in certain kinds of words. The strength finders really helped me articulate it better. So um, sometimes pe I think people can get into a, they're in a job and they just work away and, and don't you know, stop to maybe performance manage or reflect with their manager's feedback, their feedback um, on what's going well, what isn't, and why. And I think all of that can play into defining your strengths. Um, like I mentioned, I'm a huge advocate of the strength finders. It, it was almost weird. I felt like it knew me, but it didn't know me. <laughs> and so it gave me better words. English is not my favorite subject. And mm -hmm. so I liked the numbers better. Mm -hmm. So that helped. Now, I think you know some people can be good at knowing who they are, being confident who they are, owning it and articulating it. And some people aren't. Mm -hmm. yeah. So... No, it, 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 I think it's fascinating. I, uh, self awareness is huge, and we're not really encouraged. What I often find is that people look to others for approval and recognition. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. see that a lot in the people that you work with? Um, yeah, I think it's how a little bit of society trains us. Think of, you know, grades are a validation in school from grade school through university and you know you look to validation from your parents as you're growing up and their approval and um, you know depending on how you're raised if, if your parents or family or whoever's around you have, teaches you to uh, kind of own who you are then I think that external validation isn't necessarily as important um, I, I think in our society with social media and what's happened to 
what that's created for people is this need for external validation, that your worth is defined by what others think of you. And that is not the case. <laughs> but it's so hard, uh -huh. isn't it? And it's yeah. becoming something, I feel like it's changing, it's becoming even more mm -hmm. challenging in today's world. Yes, yes, it, yes, it is. Um, and so when I think about meeting with candidates and getting to know them and um, it's, there are so many people that aren't happy out there and, um, you know, we don't, I don't know that I specifically talk about validation and how one fills themselves up and their worth, things like that, but I may have to start asking about that <laughs> now. I don't know how I'd ask it, but. Um, just from my experience, my personal experience, and going through a lot of change in my career. I mean, I think my 20s, I was like eager and learning, and I hit my 30s, and I got in my head. And it is hard to get out of your head, and you question yourself, and then you look to others to validate you, and you should be looking to yourself to validate yourself. How do you do that? You knew uh -huh. I was going to that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's quieting the voices in my head, mm -hmm. which is important, and um, believing in yourself, as cheesy as that sounds, mm -hmm. um, knowing that you know, each person is unique in this world. They bring their own skill set. They bring their own spin on it, and that is, no one is ever going to be exactly like me. And no one. No one. No one's going to be like you. And uh, having that confidence and belief um, and knowing it should be a balance of the internal validation and the external validation. I do think you need both. Right. There's something really, I think, powerful in getting that external validation and affirmation and acknowledgement. And yes. Some of us thrive on it. Yes. Right? In yeah. a positive, constructive way. So we're not we're not diminishing that, but we're just asking others to not completely rely on that to kind of take mm -hmm. the time to self self reflect. Right. Yeah. Okay. You know, in corporate settings, you know, a lot of your growth and development is based on what others see in your work and being validated. And I don't know how you change that, like. Patting someone on the back for believing in themselves. I don't. I don't know if that's the case, but um, I think there's something to be said about a balance of both. So, Angie, how do people end up in jobs that are not right for them? Yeah. You talked about you know starting in college and you know just going with the degree you think is interesting. Yeah. Is there something else to it? Um, I think a big part of it has to do with what I mentioned earlier and. Um, Perhaps it's, it's pressure from society in kind of doing what everyone thinks you're supposed to do. You know, graduate from college, get a job, you know, progress, develop, make more money, buy a house, get married, have kids. Like, that's what you're right. supposed to do. And those norms, I think, um, can make people afraid from doing something different. Um, I have some friends who have recently, they're in their 30s, left corporate, and they're traveling the world. And I think it is so cool. So even though I think there's even more um, pressure from like social media and technology, it also has empowered people to say, hey, you don't have to be like what everyone else is posting on Facebook. So. Um, you know, it takes a lot of effort to get out of those norms and realize you don't have to do it that way. Um, I think, you know, I don't have children, but if we think, you know, if I think of having a child, like something that would be big for me is encouraging them to be who they are and realizing they don't have to do the same thing that everyone has done. Um, and I think that could do a lot for all of us as grown adults. So I know that you work with, with millennials mm -hmm. too. Are they any different? What is particular about millennials and connect them connecting themselves with the passion and the purpose? Mm -hmm. 
Um, I see that they have a desire to do meaningful work, um, which is exciting to see. I mean, the flip side of it is you, you do need to start somewhere, and sometimes that's not as sexy of work. Maybe it does involve you know, a little bit more administrative work, because um, you have to start somewhere. Um, but millennials, I think, have this desire to, to do better um, and better for the world, better for themselves. And like I said, that meaningful work piece. So um, I think we all could learn from them. Well, that's very interesting because I have a, you know, a, a, an interesting perspective about the, you know, needing to put in the work. And I clearly advocate passion and purpose, but how do you balance the two? Um, I, for me, what I, I would share is, you know, this isn't a, a, your career, your life's journey. It's not a destination. It is a journey. And so each step along the way is going to, to teach you something, um, whether it's a skill, give you a certain kind of experience, and you're going to realize how that fueled you or didn't fuel you. And you'll take the piece that filled you and bring it to your next experience. And it'll keep adding to it. And I love to think that, you know, down the road, you really get to what is almost a perfect position. I love I, it. It's a course corrected. Yeah, yeah. It isn't, it's not so much a ladder, it's a jungle gym. Right? Oh my God! I love that. <laughs> I am, I think we're going to title this video. It's not a ladder; it's a jungle gym. <laughs> yeah, oh it is. It is. Uh, I, you know, I've read different things. You know, um, some call it a lattice model instead of a ladder. What, whatever you want to call it, right? I think we have been trained in the past to think it's a ladder, and it's not. And I think the millennials, they. They replicate that, that it's a, let's try this, we can try that, and kind of zigzag around. Right. Um, yeah. Oh, okay. So what would you tell to someone right now who is watching and they are stuck in a job that they absolutely hate? They, you know, yep. they go, to go home, not yep. happy. Yeah. Pay attention. And just like I mentioned earlier, the love it and love it exercise um, be more mindful of the moments that you are on top of the world, super energized, and, and pay attention to when you're not. Um, secondly, I would say get curious and network. Get out and talk with people that you look at and think, how do they do it? Or I wonder how they made a move from one career to another. And leverage those people. And get curious with them. You know, how did they make the choice? Who did they talk to? What did they do? Who did they? What did they read? Things like that. Um, and then third, I would say, just face the fear. Fear can trick you into a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. And so, knowing that it's going to feel uncomfortable, knowing that it's going to feel prickly, um, and just embrace it. And, and know that you will be better on the other side once you do the hard work. Well, that's very interesting, but it's very challenging to actually do the, do the, yeah. the, take the first step. What is the secret to finding a perfect job, a calling, a purposeful employment? Yes. So the first thing I would just say is perfect is a really strong word. <laughs> I've learned that this world is very imperfect. Um, and coming from someone who in high school was Miss Perfectionist mm. in my senior year. And not in college? No. <laughs> we didn't have awards. That's award. what I remember. <laughs> but um, that is something I have learned, that it is it's not going to be perfect. So I approach things with the 80-20 rule. I always know that there's going to be 20% of my job that probably doesn't fill me up. I'm going to have to submit an expense report. I'm going to have to coordinate schedules. Um, you know, I'm going to have to deal with people that maybe aren't organized like I am. 
but as long as 80% of the job fills me up, then I think it's a good balance. So I think setting that realistic expectation is important. Um, you know, the second thing I would, I would say is it's previous to what I mentioned, doing the hard work of paying attention, networking, connecting, um, and know that it, it, there isn't one job or career for you in this world. There are many. And that's important to say, right? Yeah. Very important. Yeah. And knowing that what fits you today might not fit you in five years or 10 years. And again, learning from that, bringing whatever it is that you want to bring with you to the next position and let the rest go and keep adding to that skill set. You know, when I made the move from finance and accounting to recruiting and business development, those are very different skill sets, but what got me comfortable is knowing I was literally going to be adding new tools to my tool belt. And I, I didn't think I would do recruiting and business development in that same role for the rest of my life. I right. knew I would move on, which I have, but I brought that with me and I'm learning new things today and on we will go. I think it's a really powerful nugget. This is, I think this is going to be particularly life-changing for people the understanding that just expect that every few years things are going to change your desires are going to change yes. because we develop as human beings so we want different things absolutely oh my god i love that yeah I, that, that's beautiful beautiful right. yeah okay. and your personal life change changes yes. right you yeah. age whether it's you have children or you know, you lose a parent, you lose a family member, that is happens. going to add to your story and change you. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. And I think those are the things that we don't anticipate. Right. And how much it's going to change. And we have to, I think, adjust. Like you said previously, really course correct. Yeah. With everything. Yeah. So why do you think most people are really afraid of pursuing their dreams or going after the job that they want? Mm -hmm. And... Um, really going after the things in life in general. Yeah. We talked about it earlier, but fear. Mm -hmm. um, there's just an aversion to it, or aversion to it. I mean, um, it is scary to make changes. And so um, people, it's easy to be comfortable, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so getting comfortable with the uncomfortable is super powerful. <laughs> right? Yep. Sitting in front of this camera. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing great. Right. Isn't she false? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, fear. I think if, I don't know, as, as I think back right now, um, I don't know if I've ever been taught about fear and how to deal with fear. Oh, interesting. I wonder, you know, if children or young adults were continuously taught about that, how it might change this this whole topic, right? Career change, life change, um, that that fear and those voices, they can they can trick you. What do you wish you were told? Um I, I don't know if it's so much as told told it's I mean, it's good to hear it, but you have to believe it. Being able to, in the moment, stop and realize that fear is taking over, I think is really important. And how you deal with it, you know, I think can vary, whether it's calling it out, writing in the journal, calling a friend, calling a family member, a mentor. Um, you know, there's a variety of ways I think you can deal with it, but it, the first part is recognizing that fear is stopping you, and then find a, find a way to, to deal with it, yeah. or overcome it, or push through it, whatever yeah. um, suits your decision. Right, yeah. Okay. It's but a pray, answer. right? There's a spiritual piece to it as well. That could be a way, I guess. Tell me about that. Um, I mean, there is a, no matter your belief system, there is a greater power in life, um, and you can't control it all. And so I think sometimes relinquishing the control is so freeing, 
and relinquishing all of whatever has got you spinning or feeling a certain way um, and listening to a, what comes naturally to you, right? Like the world is going to give you what it needs. I always say the universe gives me what I need when I need it. So, you know, believe in it. Trust that it's here for, for a reason. Yep. I often um, reference that Oprah, you know, her, her motto is use me. How may I serve? Mm -hmm. Where would you have me go? What would you have me do? And then just get still and know and trust that you will be guided. Absolutely. The right people will show up, the opportunities will show up. Yeah. So there, there is something really powerful in that in the spiritual arena of, of, of finding your passion. Yeah, absolutely. And relinquishing control. That's huge. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. Right. It is. It is really yeah. what you want your legacy to be. I mean, Helping people find their passion mm. is important. Um, yes, I do help people find jobs uh, day, and help our companies hire leaders, mm -hmm. but it's bigger than that and it should be. You know, put, I, putting someone into a job that they can do but they might not be passionate about, in the short term, great. That's not great in the long term for the company oh. and for the person, right? So it's, it's this exercise in pushing others to do the hard work that I've had to do and continue to do um, and, and being there for them and, you know, relating, like, I understand this is hard, you know, how can I help, how can I, you know, move you forward. So um, that legacy of being a helper, a servant leader, being authentic, as I mentioned, is really important. You're amazing. Thank you. Just so amazing. Thank you. Is there anything, anything else that you would like to share with the audience that we haven't um, mentioned that would be really important to everyone who's really just trying to find that je ne sais quoi, that magical pill to yeah. really enjoy the work that they do? Yeah, there isn't a one size fits all. Um, and you need to do what's right for yourself mm -hmm. and know that life is going to ebb and flow and things are going to be a fit for you uh, today, but maybe not tomorrow, in, in a few years. And um, really paying attention and being mindful, um, I think will help people get to better places. Thank you so much. This Thank you for been having me. So yeah. amazing. Yeah. So there you go, folks. For me, I got so many nuggets that I'm going to extract later on, and we're <laughs> going to share as many resources as we can. Uh, but really, thank you. Yeah. This was absolutely incredible, thank and you, you are a um, a change maker. Thank you. And I salute you. Thank you. So <laughs> are you.